Hello Stepper! Welcome to Frenchie's video. I'm Franz Martin, independent administrator with Stamping Up and today it's tip on how to organize your um, designer series paper. I got two different ways. I got the one, this is the coin pocket and both of them just fit in the regular ring binder. I took it out of the ring binder because it's easier for the video here. So this is the coin pocket. You can get them on Amazon or Collector Place, I'm sure. So the pocket are two by two, and you get 16, uh, four, eight, uh, 16. You get 20 pocket. I'm sorry, 20 pocket. So I'm going to share with you how to do this one. And then I got the one that it is like for the baseball uh, card or Archie card. A collector and this one you only get nine a uh, pocket and it's two and a half by three and a half the beauty of this size here it's you see more of the pattern so it depends what you like but the designer series paper that come um, it's the 12 by 12 it comes six different uh, sheet most of them it's six different pattern but two side so uh, I'm basing on that some of them it's a little bit different but we can make it work so this case here what I done I cut strip of uh, three inch and then cut it at two and a half well you're gonna need two of the same design because one it's show this side and when you turn it around et voila you see the other side so I mean you need one I'm sorry just one and one gonna do you know this is the side and the back of it it's in the back so one of the sheet here you're gonna have to look in the front and you're gonna have to look in the back so this one what I done I print out because my um, and writing is very poorly so I type what it was again I use uh, I make myself a template two and a half by three and I type all the name of the cardstock that coordinate with that that's usually most of them it's in the back of the paper in the the back of it and some of it now they're not like this one was not so if you don't have it in the back of your paper you get it right here if it's not in the back, you don't have the catalog anymore, but you get the paper from way year past. I think on my blog it's from 2006, right there at the top where it says Stamping 101. If you click on that, it's a free chart. Click on the free chart, keep on scrolling down, and I get the list of designer series paper that you can print out or you can just look there and they give you all the designer series paper from all the way from 2006. So if you get some that it's not recent, that's where you can find the coordinated paper color. So now to match it, I wanted my designer series paper also there. So I cut strip of two and a half by one. And I didn't follow this pattern. I put it more the way that it go, you know, like the different tone. And what I done, I started at the bottom, oops, a little bit of glue on my table. And then I did um, overlap this. So I did my crumb cake. Then, and I look first, I measure it because some of them get more than others. So it's no reason for me to tell you, well, you go about a quarter inch in between or you go three quarter or so on. Because all depends on the designer series paper. Some of them get more than others. So um, you're just going to put it on your piece before you glue and then determine. Right now I went too close, I can tell. But still, it's going to give me... Uh, and I could... Easy, because I just use... Uh, I just use a um, snail. Snail, it's a little bit easier to remove. And then here we go. So first, like I said, just really pay, do your sample, you know, put it without gluing and then you're going to have a good clue on how far in between you need to go. So I had went a little bit too close, but if you're like me, as long as you see the color, that's perfectly fine. So then after this is done here, 
I would slide that and if you want you can put that on both sides so then when you would flip your page I just did it on one side me but if you want you could do it on both page so when you flip you get your color here also one more thing in the catalog it tell you if it's coordinate with a suite or stamp or whatever at the bottom it's a coordinate with share what you love of page 176 178 well i didn't have much place to write that in or type that in i just put page 176 to 178 then you're going to see a number three there what is the number three I'm going to bring you at where I store my Design Your Siri paper in a minute so you're going to understand. I mark in my catalog in which uh, category it's going to be in. If you keep a Design Your Siri paper from ear pads and that, don't mark in your catalog but just mark here in which file folder that it's going to be if it's in one four whatever so then when you look at your paper in your book or in your um, your sampler then you know oh i want this paper well it's on file three so it's easy to look another thing why i like this one better you see more of the designer series paper two by two a lot of time you cut out some of the the design so it's a little bit hard to see this one you see more of the pattern so again it's your personal choice now i got two here this one here at 13 color that com uh, combinate with that so the first one that I did, see, I just matched the color. I didn't went in order here. And I just cut a, a quarter inch by two, the strip, the strip, and then I just overlap it. That was one way. The other one, I did it different. I'm going to share. Oh, one more thing. I used grid paper first, and grid paper was a little bit more tricky. The way that I done that, I put this at the five, and I know two inch, it's three. So three to five, it's two inch. You get a little, oops, you don't see. You get a little lip there. So it was easy to keep this straight. Push that right here at the three, pushed it down. So then I know I got a square of two inch. Oh, sometime I didn't just cut just right at the, you see, it's just off a little bit. I don't sweat the small stuff. I would just went, go right here and shave that off a bit. Now I can slide that in the pocket. So that was the first one that I did. I thought that was pretty slick, but I'm going to show you another way. So this one, the beauty of this, you get all your pattern. Here it's a perfect example. This lovely paper here with those nice flower. Um, it's share what you love. Well, when I cut that, oh, not this one. Let me pull this here. So this you're going to need to cut two piece of two by two because you need double of of it you need the front of the paper and then the back but you see this here if I would have just one side see I don't see the big flowers so that's the advantage to go with I call it the baseball card because the pattern it's much bigger but again it's whatever you prefer this one here the advantage of this size it's you see both sides so this is one sheet one sheet one sheet one sheet one sheet one sheet when i turn it around see i get all the same but see differently see this one here see i barely see the flowers and let me show you so this one here right here it's this beautiful paper right here so that's the downfall of the two by two a lot of the time you won't see the beautiful print while this one you see a lot more of the print just that you're going to have to go back and forth to see the full pack of paper like the front of the paper and then the back just like it is on the real thing really now i did the paper here like i explained to you now this one at 13 the next one that i did this one I got number seven, that means it's in the slot number seven. And this one uh, just got, I think it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine piece. So you see, I could put all the big, this is just the cardstock that coordinate. And at the end, 
I just cut one piece of two by two and I put a strip of one so it's equally proportioned there. Like I said, I was playing around and now I have to decide, am I going with the two by two or I'm going with this? And to be honest, I think I'm gonna go with this pattern just because I can see more of my pretty designer Siri paper. Now I will stop this video and I'm gonna start it right back. I'm gonna carry this at where I store my paper. Be right back. Okay, here I am. So this is the file cabinet that I got. It's for a 12 by 12 paper. And if I remember correctly, I think I got it at Michael's. Who knows? I mean, I got that for years. So you would look for a 12 by 12 paper. And like I said, I just keep, um, keep current stuff. So for me, I put the number that I put in my catalog. Like today we work with number seven. So if I pull this here, here it is, my number seven nature poem. Another thing that I did here in my cabinets, it's I put a sticky note here so I know exactly the paper, the coordinated paper that go with that. So if I would grab this, then I know most of them are written in the back. A few of them are not. And also, if I get it out of that my serin wrap or the, the clear wrap, then I still can keep that on my file, attach it to my file. Now, another one that we work, uh, uh, share what you love. This one don't have the backing paper. It's on the, uh, the shrink wrap there. So if you would remove that, it's important that you leave it there or you always got it in the catalog. But if you get old paper, then that would be good to have it in the section. So that's why on my um, due date that I did here, I put a number there. And the number that it's there, that means it's which number in the file that's I going to look. So if you get old paper and so on, this would be an awesome tool because you can see all the pattern plus it gives you the number where it is. Even if you get more than one paper in here, let's say you get three different paper, you would put the number uh, that it is in the file. So it would be an easy access to find your stuff. So this is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, happy stamping, my friend. Bye-bye for now.